having to move because I sold my house. And, mm -hmm. and what happened to the money from the sale of your house? Went to him. Now, this supposedly, that is not Vincent Vesey. This has been photoshopped. Stock photo. See the big G on my forehead that says gullible? A couple years ago, $43 million in $100 bills was found in an empty Nigerian apartment. Shortly before the discovery of this money, a Florida woman by the name of Margaret Nooney Smith received an email from a Nigerian prince who needed help moving $43 million out of the country. Margaret neglected to read this email because she was busy sending emails to a different foreign man, an incredibly handsome and charismatic man by the name of Vincent Vesey. Vincent Vesey and Margaret's online chats eventually blossomed into a beautiful romance, complete in every way, except for the fact that the two had never met. But it was 2020, and long-distance relationships had become commonplace. There was no shame on either side. And so after Vincent started asking Margaret for money, we can now understand how unfortunate it was that Margaret would ignore those emails from the Nigerian prince. Margaret was not a rich woman, but she was willing to provide what little she could. She was a very charitable woman, as evidenced by her career path. You see, Margaret worked for a nonprofit organization, the Friends of the Jacksonville Public Library, which raised money for the goals of supporting the public library, literacy, and educational groups in the Jacksonville community. And she was good at her job, quickly climbing the NPO ladder, so to speak. Only one year before meeting her soulmate Vincent, Margaret had become president of the organization. Under Margaret's leadership, the NPO amassed over $150,000 in funding. But when she had run out of personal funds for helping her online boyfriend, Margaret resorted to borrowing from the friends of the Jacksonville Public Library. In a single month, she had withdrawn nearly all the money in the account. This did not go unnoticed, and Margaret was reported to the police for fraud. She was taken into custody and transported to the police station for interrogation. She's good. You can go ahead and have a seat. Well, I'm going to grab that from yeah. real, real quick. Let me take those off. All right, Ms. Smith, my name is Detective Holderfield. Okay. We're at 501 East Bay Street. That's the police memorial building. Mm -hmm. It's December 8th, 2021, and it is 2.36 p.m. Okay, you can read and write, ma'am? Yes, I can. Right. Do you need glasses to read or? I uh, have yeah. um, had cataract surgery, okay. and if the light is bright enough, I don't okay. need. So all I'm asking is if you could just read that top line right here out loud, and then I will read the rest okay. of it. You have the following rights under the United States Constitution. Okay. That's, that's good. Okay. Okay. You do not have to say to make us, you do not have to make a statement or say anything. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Okay. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or before any questions are asked of you, and to have the lawyer with you during any questioning. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, won't be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. If you do answer questions, you have the right to stop answering questions at any time and consult with a lawyer. You understand the rights afforded to you under the United States Constitution? Yes, I do. Okay. You could just sign that we've reviewed your rights. Now, did the officer that brought you down here tell you why you were brought no. down? I began an investigation and obtained an arrest warrant for you based on activity with friends of the Jacksonville Public Library. Okay. Are you aware of what that could be about? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just so that I make sure that I am not mistaken. I want to make sure I got your proper name, date of birth, make sure I am talking to the person I believe you to be. Okay. okay. Your first name is Margaret. 
correct. Can you spell that for me? M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T. Okay. Do you have a middle name then? My maiden name was Nooney, N-O-O-N-E-Y, okay. Smith. Common spelling. No E at the end, not the British Smith. No, 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 just... S-M-I-T. Yes, yes. And your date of birth, ma'am? 10-9-1946. Which makes you how old now? 75. And where do you currently reside? I currently reside at 1444. Naldo, N-A-L-D-O, Avenue, apartment number six, Jacksonville, Florida, 32207. And do you have a good phone number, ma'am? Uh, my cell phone number is... And what did you do with the friends? Everything. Uh... I was a volunteer, sorted books, packed books, uh, eventually took greater responsibility, was a board member, became the treasurer, and then the president. A long time, right? 10, 15 years? No, not that long. There's, when people don't, don't want to do things, I usually step up. Okay. But you were involved with the Friends for at least 10 years. Well, I worked for the public library for close to 40 years. And within a couple of years after that, I got involved with the Friends. So. So it was about, I think, 2011 or 12 that you first appeared on the board of directors uh, on the at least the, pa yeah, the probably, paperwork list. Probably so. So from the folks that I've talked to there, you did a lot for me. Some would say yes. <laughs> you think some don't think so? Well, you know, uh, you you go through life and don't have everyone is not a fan. Sure. I'm, I'm used to that. So particularly what brings you here, though, is withdrawals that were made on their account. Yes, I'm aware. Okay. To the tune of a hundred and... Twenty-ish thousand dollars. Hundred and thirty-two. Okay. What happened to the money? I was scammed in a romance scam. Okay. I was catfished, and I was promised that this was a loan. I was given documents that showed that this individual had money in a bank and there were promises of repayment. Okay. And who was this individual or what do you know? The name he went under, which I have since found was not the person I was dealing with, was Vincent Vesey, V-E-S-S-E-E. -S -S -E -E. And how did you meet him? He contacted me through Facebook. Okay. And I guess this was after we had a lockdown from the pandemic. Okay. And can I have some water? Sure. So, Mr. Vincent, did you, all, did you belong to any groups or anything of that nature? Did you just get a private message one day? Well, how, how did the first contact start to well, the next of your... I had a request to become a friend. Okay. And from the information that he provided, he sounded, he claimed to live in Miami. Um, he claimed to have a daughter, have been widowed for three years. Um, and subsequently, in looking at these kind of scams, I didn't realize the pattern. He uh, 
claimed to be a graduate engineer specializing in uh, oil cleanup. Do you recall roughly when the first communication was? Would have been in June of 2020. Okay. So y'all had a online relationship? Yes. And he subsequently erased that Facebook okay. account. Did you ever have any phone conversations with him? Repeatedly. So how would you call him or how would you have phone audio conversations? Um, See, what was the name of that? There's an app called, gosh, what's it called? It's since been changed to a different uh, mechanism, but there was a, there was an app that uh, you could either do just verb, you could do voice communication or just email type. Right. And he would call me almost a, a daily basis. So let me just make sure I understand. So you got a friend request on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so within Facebook, there is a service called Messenger, which is like an add-on app that allows video chatting, audio chatting, or text messaging. Right. Okay. Did you do this within Facebook or did he instruct you to download an, an additional app that you were texting and there was an additional app. Okay. And you don't recall the name of it? It's it's still on my phone. Okay. If I get your phone, would you mind showing me? No, yeah. Of course not. Okay. Let me grab that real quick. It's called Hangouts. Okay. So I think that's a Google application. And they've since changed it. They've upgraded that's an old. Okay. And supposedly, all of the um, conversations have been archived. By whom? By Google. Okay. You've made a complaint through them? No. Okay. Did he ever send you any other contact information, a phone number? Yes, I don't. I don't have. It's not in there. I have a whole dossier okay. that I have completed that's in my apartment okay. that... Um, Unfortunately, my damn laptop is not working properly. I've called it the diary of a scam, and I have documented all the transactions I made, all of the promises, the addresses, the, you know, all of that information. Okay. So since you mentioned transactions, how were you sending this money to him? Bitcoins. Okay. He gave, he gave me a, um, a QR code right. and I uh, took the cash, converted it to bitcoins and sent it off to where he had requested. Okay. How were you converting the cash to bitcoin? Well, there's a, there are a number of places in Jacksonville that have I don't know, terminals, what I don't know what you call them. And, uh, you get registered with Bitcoin and put in your password and start feeding the cash. And it sends the, and I, in fact, on in my uh, photo app, I have the, uh, have records of all of the uh, receipts. Okay. Because he had requested that um, I, uh, send him copies of the receipts until the very end. And he claimed that um, his boys, of which I found out that was a scam too, um, were using his phone and he didn't want them to see all the money that he had. So. Okay. When you did the Bitcoin ATM transactions, did you always send the money to the same wallet? Or did you get different? As far as I know, they were the same, they were the same the, wallet. 
I mean, would he send you a new QR code each time, or no. you use the one QR code that you routinely? Well, I've got copies of the QR. See, this is what I was sending. Okay. How many of these do you have? I have no idea. Because uh, you have a limitation of how many Bitcoins you can send at a time. It's like 1750. Right. So I, t I took out loans and I, I mean, not just as friends of the library. I mean, See the big G on my forehead that says gullible? And the man that I thought that I was dealing with, I since doing a little investigation on my own, I found that he's not the man. I don't even know if I have a... Did you ever inform police? No, I never, this? I never did. I was going to go to the FBI, but then I got tied up in having to move because I sold my house. And, okay. and what happened to the money from the sale of your house? Went to him. Now, this supposedly, that is not... Vincent Vesey. This has been photoshopped. Stock photo. This is, well, because that and there's one with, I don't know, I think he must be an Italian. I tried to see what the signage in the back was. Mm -hmm. This is a picture taken in 2015 uh, and in England. Mm -hmm. These supposedly were his boys. Said lie. And that was Photoshop too. Okay, well, go go back if you don't mind. These are gift. What, what are these tracking? What is this information? May have been supposedly his daughter um, liked a game, and okay. I would send. I, I I sent money to his daughter. Okay. And he sent me flowers, a teddy bear, and chocolates. And I found out later it was a stolen credit card. The florist called me. Okay. What, what, okay. So he, he, he just hired a local florist to deliver. Yeah, line. yeah. Not, not through a um, common carrier. Okay. Yeah, this is that's the end of the things involved. With so this this predates your involvement with him. Yeah, this does. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. I I, I see that you do start in July or so doing the Bitcoin transactions. What made you in September? start taking the friend's money? Well, he wanted, he had a need just to, um, for a large amount of money to pay off, to be able to get his employees and him off this oil rig. And um, I am a very gullible person. And I don't know why I told him but I refused to to go to the friend's money, and he kept promising and promising that it was just a loan. And so I went to the only, I mean, I had borrowed to my, um, to my limit. Okay. And uh, it was a source of money that I intended to borrow, not to, not to steal. I had a promise of being paid back. Okay. 
how did you believe the money was going to come back to you? I have copies of a uh, a bank account with Citibank that shows. Initially, it showed a million dollar balance. He claimed he could not access that money when he left town, and uh, we were going to. I was going to move down to Pompano Beach with him, and he was going to restore that uh, for everything he I loaned him. When you talked to him on the phone, how did he sound? I don't know what you mean. He sounded sincere. He sounded, uh, he, he claimed. So his tone of voice was congenial. Oh, loving. Okay. Did he seem to have an accent of any kind? Yes. And he claimed to have originally been from Albania. Okay. Uh, when I asked him about, and he, immigrated with an uncle as a teenager and had lived in this country, was supposed to, in fact, I have a picture of him supposedly from a passport. He, he had sent me various documents and at the bottom of one of them, there was a picture of a man that was supposedly a passport picture. Did you ever video chat with him? No. Okay. So this was pictures from Community First. Okay. There's no denying that that is you no. conducting the transaction. Is there some reason you went to so many different branches to withdraw the money? Because there was a limitation with the amount of cash that you could take out at any one time. Okay. I went to different branches. And did the tellers inform you that they were doing currency transaction reports? And... No. Okay. They didn't make you sign any documentation to that effect? No. Okay. Did they at any time warn you or question why you were taking out so much money from the library fund? No, because I was the author. I was I was the authorized person. I was not a third party, or I mean, my name. The uh, the friends. There were two other people who could sign checks, right? But no one ever did that. Okay. So you had built a rapport with these folks. They knew you for the most part. That I what? You built a rapport with these tellers. Did they? Did you know most of the tellers that you yeah. were getting the large from? No. Yeah. They were just. They were just random employees. Whoever was working there at the yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. And so, when you take out, let's say thirty thousand dollars in end of October, how long would it take you to move that through that Bitcoin ATM, or were there other methods that you were sending money? Probably three trips because of the uh, limitation as to how many Bitcoins you could purchase in a day in a 24-hour period. So did you have to create your own Bitcoin wallet before you could transfer these monies? I guess that's what they called it. I, I had registered with Bitcoin. They actually had questioned me. With, with, with whom? When you say with Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin of America was the okay. was the entity that yes. I dealt with. Okay. Do you happen to know, did you send every Bitcoin that you retained out, or do you still have a balance? I sent it all out. I have no I have no residual funds. None of this money that I acquired was for my personal use. Purchased nothing. I paid no bills. I felt that I was the conduit. You chose to give a loan, though, right? That's personal. You gave a personal loan to someone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can look at it that way. 
unfortunately I have to. Well, no, I mean, that's fine. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I wish when I sat in this office two desks away that I got a call in June or July that Miss Margaret Smith was sending money to some guy she didn't know in Miami, and I had an opportunity to stop it then. But I got one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars missing from a nonprofit. I have to, you, um, I, I understand. You don't have to. Yeah. There's no mechanism for recovery. You haven't stashed any of it in Bitcoin. You don't think there might be any. I mean, Bit, Bitcoin's been volatile. The the value could be far greater than it was when you were sending. In fact, no, that he was. It the, will be. He was. Um, Supposedly, he was leaving the oil rig, and he was going to come be back in Florida, and I didn't hear anything, and I didn't hear anything, and I kept sending him text messages. Never got a response until, I guess it was almost a week, and he said he'd been in the hospital. And so I questioned what was wrong, which hospital, where was he, and I got no response. And then he asked me for $5,000, and I said, no, I don't have $5,000. And then I stopped hearing from him until I got it's all in Hangouts. Uh, he wanted to know, he said, I abandoned him. And I've not heard anything since. What was your Facebook identity? What was your name at the time? Were you using just Margaret I was Smith? Just using my name, yeah. Do you still have your Facebook account? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about Hangouts? How did you, when you registered for that? Um, gosh, I don't even remember. Um, I know, I, I think you had to be invited to join that. And I accepted the invitation because, I mean, yeah. and I don't think he thought that all of those conversations would be archived. Now, when you say, can you still read? the past conversations on your app? I'm not quite sure how to do that, but I'm, supposedly I can do that. On the Hangouts, did you ever initiate any of the phone calls? Okay. And he would always answer readily? Yeah. Is there any voice messaging? Like, would, you, would he miss a call and there was a mechanism to leave a message or anything of that nature? I don't recall. And what is your current source of income? Do you have a pension being retired? I have a pension from the city of Jacksonville. I have a, a pension from the state of Florida from my late husband. And I have a, 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 an annuity that I invested in when I retired. Okay. This uh, dossier you say that you've got with everything, is that digital or is it hard copy paper? Uh, it's both. I have, like I said, I've been having trouble with my laptop and I had printed out the whole story. Okay. 
along with the documentation of his the Citibank account, which I should have been suspicious when I saw what the address was, because it looked like the address was in the United Emirates. Sure. But uh, but I've got the I've got supposedly I, I did a whatever that social catfishing site is. I went in looking for him, and I found a picture of a very different man, who I believe is the true Vincent Vesey, who. Didn't look at all like the guy that uh, I thought I was <clears throat> talking to. These images of receipts that you have, do you have those hard copy receipts still? I do, but the problem is they're on... Uh, they fade. Thermal paper. Yes. Yeah, the thermal okay. paper. I mean, some of them you can't even tell. No, I ha I have all of that, but um, okay. except for the last, I don't know, ten. Okay. When he asked me not to take pictures of them. Right, but did you take pictures of them anyway, or no? You stopped. I have them. I mean, I have. Okay, them. I got you. The receipts. Would you be willing to sign a consent to search of this phone and allow me to make a backup of this phone? Yes. Okay. This is your personal property. Yes. And it's not really directly tied to your theft from the friends. And it could be several weeks before I could return it to well, you. It's, it's my only communication with the world. And that's why I'm, I'm asking, because if there is any opportunity for me to find out where this money's went, and if I could have any opportunity to prove that this person committed crimes against you, these documents contained within are what's gonna, gonna give me assistance there. I have a couple obligations. I have a couple medical appointments okay. that I'm scheduled to make. I need to cancel them. I'm supposed to be running a Christmas party okay. for an organization. I need to tell them I'm not gonna make it. I mean, I assume I'm going to be spending the night here. Yeah, you are going to be booked in the to the county jail. Yeah. Okay. I believe your bond was currently set at thirty thousand um, dollars. You will go before a judge. There will be a hearing regarding that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you're willing to sign a consent to search and allow me to try to get the data off of this phone, I, I will get that order written up and and submitted immediately. Uh, you know, within the day, to to try to expedite any opportunity of obtaining information that can lead me to so be a real I just patient. I just go missing. But, it said this is my only contact with the world. Like I like I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm asking you for an opportunity to help validate what you're telling me, because all that the facts lead to me, Miss Smith, is that you went to a bank account that you had access and you stole money that you weren't supposed to use in that way. Okay, okay I understand that, but my immediate do I have a phone call to call a family you, member? Yeah, absolutely. You will You will be able to make phone calls. It's going to be... Me just going up missing is going to be problematic. Okay, what... Do you have family local? Yes, I do. Okay. Who is that? Well, I have two brothers. One named Rick Nooney, another brother named Tim Nooney, and a sister named Nancy. Okay. That are here in Jacksonville? They're in Jacksonville. That, that communicate with you regularly, check on you? Uh, <laughs> they care for you. We, we are not a particularly close so, family. Understand. Understand. They all have their lives. I get that. Um. It, it, it seems like this is the, I mean, what is the alternative? Not to give consent, and then what pathway do you go down? I will be limited, okay? But I understand that, you know, I don't want to cut you off communication if you post bail. I mean, you will be able to make phone calls from within the jail while, while you're 
facing charges you know, while you're booked prior to to the filing. Is that, the on, a pay, is that on a pay phone? Okay. I, I'm not certain how everything works. I mean, there is, there is opportunities to make calls at no okay. cost to you. They are limited in time, and I'm not sure how that system works in its entirety. Uh, but we do not deprive people from communication. I have some medical issues. Okay. And we have a medical staff that that's not something I can provide for you. No, I'm I mean, I've doctor. got all my medicine sitting at home. No, no, I, I understand. And they, a nurse will check you out upon being booked. I'm going to be the one that walks you across okay. the street and okay. gets you booked. You will you will be provided care. Okay. And I, like I said, I'm not qualified to know anything about No, no, about. I'm just, this is a new experience for me. I understand. Would there, well, you have my consent to okay. go into my phone. Okay. In that case, I'm going to get the form that requires you to fill that out and power it off so that we're able to, to power it on to get the data off. Is Do you have any questions for me? Not that come to my mind immediately. Okay. All right, give me a couple minutes, all right? powering off here, okay. All right, Ms. Smith, hold your hands out for me straight. I'll keep them in the front. I'm just gonna go loose with them, all right? So please don't do anything foolish. I don't think we have to worry about that. You know, done. In fact, I'll get you your thing. Margaret Nooney Smith was sentenced to 198 days in prison and five years of probation for defrauding the nonprofit organization. And as she converted all of her cash into Bitcoin via Bitcoin ATMs at the request of her boyfriend Vincent, the money was unrecoverable. Coincidentally enough, Vincent ceased communication with Margaret once the police had become involved. We are all wishing he's okay. He probably just dropped his phone in the toilet or something.